Hi, I'm Bob in Osterhout. I want to talk to you about post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, it, it's an extremely uncomfortable uh, disorder that, that affects uh, many, many people uh, in our country today, and it's increasing with people coming back from the wars. Uh, I've been treating this disorder since 1977, uh, and, and there's a very, uh, actually quite simple uh, process that I see people go through when they recover from it, and I believe it's possible to fully recover from that uh, process, from, from post-traumatic stress disorder, and, and I'd like to explain that uh, so that it's clear to you. Um, the, the first thing that happens anytime there's a trauma, uh, and, and it's, I've treated a wide range of traumas, uh, people who've been in life-threatening situations, people who've been in war, people who've been uh, sexually or physically abused or molested, uh, even people who've been tortured. Uh, and in each of those situations, uh, the, if you think about what the physical response is to experiencing that trauma, it's this. There's a, there's a very deep tension and it's usually connected with a range of emotions. Uh, fear is, is of course very common, but there's a whole lot of different emotions that get mixed in with that and uh, being overwhelmed is, is often a big part of that. Um, and the process of recovery, uh, from my experience, has been the same no matter what the trauma is. Uh, and, and the first thing that, uh, that uh, I think is important about that is that it's not necessary to talk about the trauma. Uh, I learned this early on. Um, I worked with a woman who she'd actually been in counseling for 17 years and when she came to the first session uh, I almost, uh, I came very close to making a decision to put her in the hospital uh, because she was so vulnerable and fragile. Uh, particularly when I started asking her questions about her history. And I was working at a clinic that required that we get a detailed history, uh, but as soon as I started asking about that, I could see her uh, becoming even more fragile, so I just set that aside and actually talked to the psychiatrist and he wrote a dispensation so I didn't need to get the history from her. Uh, and uh, so we just started talking about what the problems were uh, that she was dealing with right now, right at this moment, and and how can she deal with what she had to deal with the rest of the day in an effective way. Uh, and a big part of that is getting rid of tension. So she she learned the diaphragmatic breathing and the grounding, which are described in other videos, and, and regularly practiced those so that the overall tension level was continually reduce, uh, being reduced. And she learned to accept emotions, which is explained in the in the video on, on emotion. And we just continued to deal with every challenge that came up uh, week by week as, as she continued in counseling. Um, and uh, after oh, about a month or so, she had a job offer in a distant city and it was really difficult to turn it down. Uh, so she took the job and was commuting for, uh, for her treatment. And um, at some point it just uh, made sense that uh, the commute wasn't worth the benefit of the treatment because she understood the process. Uh, and when she was able to do the process, uh, she was able to fully recover. So I kept in touch over the phone for a number of months, and she fully recovered and, and wound up getting married and doing very well in, in her new job, and I never found out what her trauma was. I could probably guess, but there's really no value in that. So the idea of talking about the trauma involves the cognitive part of your brain, the cerebral cortex, and, and my impression is all of the problems from post-traumatic stress come from the emotional part of the brain, the limbic system. The, the damage is emotional. The damage is, is the deep tension uh, combined with an overwhelming emotion. Uh, so our natural tendency is to, is to hold that down and, and to, to uh, keep it out of the way. And, and there's also a survival component in that. I, I remember once uh, uh, driving on a, a back road and um, hitting a patch of ice and doing a quick spin, and I was in a, in a Jeep at the time, and uh, the, the uh, uh, end of the Jeep was hanging over a, a ravine with a 30-foot drop. And I just calmly got out of the Jeep and turned the, the, the levers on the hub so that I got into four-wheel drive, got back in, backed onto the road, and then I got the shakes, <laughs> okay? Uh, but I was totally focused and calm, hanging over the edge, could have done, started tumbling and been seriously injured uh, for a few moments, and then afterwards, then got the flood of it. 
So the key, uh, first of all, if you ever experience a traumatic experience, is to recognize that there's a natural emotion that goes with that and to allow that to run its course. Uh, but when the trauma has been in the past and that tension has been down, held down, uh, that can create significant problems and sometimes they come up decades uh, afterwards. Uh, I, I've often worked with, uh, I've actually worked with people as far back as World War II uh, in the past decade, uh, but worked with people from the, the Korean War and Vietnam War and uh, both Gulf Wars and, and Afghanistan. And the, 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 the reaction is the, is the same. And it's often, uh, like I said, months or years afterwards. Uh, I worked with a man uh, who had been in Vietnam and he came back and um, got a good job and got married and raised a family and then retired and a few months into his retirement he started having symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder and, and flashbacks of, of events that, uh, that took place and nightmares and recurring memories and just couldn't take his mind away from it and was beginning to feel overwhelmed. And what we did is simply the same thing that I do with everyone working with post-traumatic stress disorder is to start with balance, okay? You get rid of the tension because the tension blocks the emotional experience. So working with the grounding and the diaphragmatic breathing, and he learned that and practiced it and followed through on it quite well. Um, and then the key is accepting the emotion when it comes up. And once you clear away the surface tension, uh, the emotion comes up when people are ready to deal with it. And, and this man was a, was a prime example of that. He called me uh, one day, and he had been sitting on his deck in the sunshine, just relaxing, you know, feeling good, no pressure, uh, no stress, and all of a sudden just had this sensation that someone was behind the bush ready to blow him away. Okay, that's a normal feeling. And he recognized it as a normal feeling because we had talked about it. But the difference is, is that it came from the past. Now the nature of emotions, as I explained in, in the emotional video, uh, is that they come from the present moment. Okay, they're our response to the present moment. So there's a disconnect and we feel we have to act right now. And so if you start worrying about it or thinking about it, that increases its own tension and adds to the problem. But if you simply breathe and ground, recognize it's an emotional pro emotion, normal emotion, normal response to a traumatic experience, and let the emotion run its course, it passes in a matter of minutes. Now those are very uncomfortable minutes, highly uncomfortable minutes because the traumas were very uncomfortable. Okay? But once you've been through it a few times, people gain confidence in that and let that run its course and then go and complete the recovery process. My experience is that this usually takes months. I've never seen it happen in just weeks. And there are occasions uh, if the stress is continuing to build from outside sources that it, it can take years. Uh, but that usually has an outside stimulus. My experience is usually in a matter of months, once you accept the emotion, recognize that it's a normal emotion but it's coming from past trauma, and simply breathe and ground and allow yourself to experience the emotion without tensing up or holding your breath, but allow yourself to experience it. Uh, it passes, and now that piece of the tension is gone, totally gone. And I, I often don't see clients, you know, years after they've completed treatment, so I don't get feedback on long-term effects. But I have in a couple of cases uh, that, that give me increased confidence with this. I worked with a woman who had been in a, in a severe trauma, and she'd been through some treatment and actually thought she had recovered, but, but there was an incident that happened that was very similar to the, to the trauma that she had experienced, and, and all of her symptoms came flooding back again. Uh, so she, she came to me, and we worked through this process, and, and over a period of months, she resolved all of that uh, emotional tension by experiencing it. And it was a very painful process for her, of course. Um, and uh, she completed treatment. And she called me uh, a couple of years later. And it was uncanny because there was another incident that she had experienced at work that was similar to her trauma, which was similar to the incident that led her to, to come to see me in the first place that brought on the flood of symptoms. And this she handled without any difficulty whatsoever. As a matter of fact, she was helpful to other people in helping them handle it. Uh, so there was no tension that got tapped into that, that created a, a problem. And, and that gives me confidence that people can resolve this with patience and with acceptance. And I can't underestimate or I can't uh, 
uh, it's a very painful process, okay? I, I've worked through with dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people through this process. It is extremely painful, but the pain lasts minutes. That's the key. It's a natural process. The emotions are natural. If you accept them, allow them to pass, they last a few, a few minutes, and then one more piece is gone. You keep on taking away piece by piece and piece. All the emotional tension eventually resolves, and you're back to a normal life. I hope that's helpful to you. Take care.